Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech. And in this video, I'm going to go through an introduction to Bode plots. So Bode plots are actually two plots, and they're formed from the loop transfer function. So if I extract the characteristic equation from some closed loop transfer function, and put it into this form, then I can extract the loop transfer function GL. That's what we use for Bode plots. So let me just show a crude illustration of a Bode plot. It's the magnitude of that loop transfer function evaluated at all points s equal j omega and be represented in the units of decibels. So it's the magnitude of the loop transfer function for all s equal j omega versus omega in radians per second. The second plot, the one below it, is the loop transfer function at all points s equal j omega but it's the phase of it versus omega, again, in radians per second. And the units we use there are degrees. So one way to interpret the Bode plot is from your background in root locus. So if we had a root locus like this, here's the complex plane, and let's say it goes like that. One of the things that we're very interested in is where the root locus crosses the imaginary axis. It tells us, of course, about stability. So what the Bode plot is, is that it is the evaluation of that loop transfer function's magnitude and phase for all s equal j omega, that is, for all the points on this imaginary axis. So it gives us a lot of information about the loop transfer function's behavior in the vicinity, exactly on, the imaginary axis. Now here's a computer-generated Bode plot. This is from MATLAB. And let me just point out a couple things. First, when you make this Bode plot from the loop transfer function, you can think of it as assuming that k is equal to 1. So whenever you see a Bode plot, you should just think in terms of k, the, the loop gain, is equal to 1. Notice also the scale on the magnitude plot. It's in decibels, but it goes by factors, in this case, of 40. Typically what you want to do is have the, the scale on the magnitude plot go by factors of 20s or 40s, and you'll see why when we get into the sketching of Bode plot later. Now this magnitude plot is actually, again, the magnitude of the loop transfer function j omega, and this is the phase of the loop transfer function at j omega. So it just says magnitude and phase, but this is what it really means. Now let's talk about decibels. So the gain in dB is equal to 20 log 10 of k. So if I have some value of the loop gain, here it's 1 for this Bode plot. But if I have this value of k, then I take the log 10 of it and multiply it by 20, and that's the value of the gain in decibels. So for instance, for k equal 1, log 10 of 1 is 0. So k equals 1 implies 0 dB. Now that's not to say that this plot is 0 dB everywhere. That's just the contribution of k equal 1 to this Bode plot. Again, we'll see more about that when we get into sketching. Suffice it to say, in order to effectively work with Bode plots, you have to be able to make this conversion between values of k and a gain in decibels. A couple other things to point out about the Bode plot. Notice that in the x-axis, the frequency axis, is in the log scale. So here's 0.1 radians per second, 1 radians per second, 10 radians per second. Notice also that in the magnitude plot, we have a very pronounced slope for low frequency, and another very pronounced slope at the high frequency end. And also in the phase plot, we have a very pronounced slope. It's actually zero at the low frequency and the high frequency. Those behaviors won't always be true in every Bode plot. However, they do tell us quite a bit about what the loop transfer function is. Now let's get into the analysis of the Bode plot. First, what we're going to do is be able to pick off the gain and phase crossover frequencies. So the gain crossover frequency is the frequency in radians per second where the magnitude plot crosses the 0 dB line. So here's this yellow dot, and it's now a black dot, and that tells us that the gain crossover frequency is about equal to 2.3 radians per second. And if you were to draw a vertical line down like so, this is 1, this is 2, so it's about 2.3. Now the phase crossover frequency, omega PC, is where the phase plot crosses negative 180. And in this plot, that's omega PC 
is only roughly 1.5 radians per second. Again, if I draw this vertical line down through that point, I get about 1.5 radians per second. That's it. Now let's just go up a page to that plot we had before and pick off the uh, gain, and gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency of this one, just as another example. So here's the 0 dB line. I can pick that off and I have about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So omega gain crossover is roughly 0.5 radians per second. And the phase crossover frequency, well, that's interesting. This plot never crosses negative 180 degrees. So we really don't have a phase crossover frequency. And that's okay. It still tells us quite a bit about the behavior of the closed loop system just by looking at this magnitude and phase of the loop transfer function. Now the next thing for analysis is to be able to pick off the gain and phase margins of your Bode plot. Now there's some definitions here and that's great, but it's much easier just to get them graphically. So here's the gain margin negative 20 log 10 of the magnitude of GL at the phase crossover frequency. And the phase margin is 180 plus the phase of the loop transfer function at the gain crossover frequency. Now let's just see how we pick those off graphically by going up to the previous example. So here we have the magnitude plot and we have a gain crossover frequency at about 2.3 radians per second. So let me extend this line down from our gain crossover frequency right down through the phase plot. This distance that the phase plot is below negative 180 at the gain crossover frequency tells us the phase margin. In this case, it's actually negative phase margin because it's below the negative 180 line. So what this tells me is the phase margin is about negative 70 degrees. It's this distance, it's below the negative 180 line, so it's negative phase margin, and that distance is about 70 degrees. So it's negative 70 phase margin. Now let's look at the gain margin. Here, I move this omega PC line up and have it go right through the gain plot. And now what I have here is I'm focusing on this distance, which is the amount that the magnitude plot is above the 0 dB line. And again, that's negative gain margin. So here, our gain margin is about negative 5 dB. So in this example, we had both negative gain margin and negative phase margin. And sometimes they're easily confused. That is, gain margin is positive if it's below 0 dB, and phase margin is positive if it's above negative 180 degrees. And this is probably the most important part of the analysis of Bode plots. Now we're going to interpret what the gain and the phase margins are telling us. First, related to stability. If the phase margin is positive, if the phase margin is greater than zero, then the closed loop system is stable for k equal one. If the phase margin is negative, then the closed loop system is unstable for k equals one. Now that is just a sort of binary piece of information, but we can also get information about how the closed loop poles change as k changes. And that we get from looking at gain margin. Now before we go through that, let's just again review how k is related to a gain through decibels. So if I wanted to change from some gain value in dB, I would divide it by 20, that's this quantity, and use that as the exponent to 10 and solve for k. And what we're going to do with this gain margin analysis is we're going to use gain margin for that value of gain in this equation. So here's how it goes. If the gain margin is greater than 0, then k can be increased by the factor of the gm, the gain margin, without any change in the phase margin, that is, without any change in our stability analysis that we achieved up here. However, above that value of k, the phase margin changes sign, and so stability changes. It flips from whatever we calculated up here. Similarly, if the gain margin is less than zero, then k can be decreased by the factor of the gain margin 
without any change to the sign of the phase margin, so without any effect on stability. If you go below that value of k, then the phase margin changes sign and the stability analysis flips. Now, just two more things before we get into some examples. First, we haven't talked anything about the transient response of the system in, with respect to gain margin, phase margin, and Bode plots in general. However, it turns out for some systems, you can actually relate the phase margin back to some of our time domain performance requirements, things like percent overshoot. As you know, if the closed loop system is second order, then the percent overshoot is directly related to zeta of the dominant closed loop second order poles, where zeta is related to this angle, sine theta equals zeta. This is a line of constant zeta, and that tells us what the percent overshoot is. So if your closed loop system is second order or dominated by second order poles, then what we can do is actually relate this percent overshoot back to the phase margin through zeta. Specifically, the phase margin is roughly 100 times zeta. So if I wanted my zeta to be 0.7 to have percent overshoot of roughly 5%, I could target a phase margin design requirement of maybe 70 degrees, and we'd be in the ballpark. This is rather important. We've talked so far about having k equal to 1, but how we're really going to use Bode plots is by imagining k changing, either going up or going down, like we just discussed with the gain margin analysis. So we have to be able to visualize these plots changing as k changes, and it's real easy. First off, if you change k, it has absolutely no effect on the phase plot. It only affects the gain plot, the magnitude plot. And the way it affects it is if k goes up, the magnitude plot goes up. If k goes down, the magnitude plot goes down. It's that simple. Well, let's work this example, and what we're supposed to do is find the phase margin and gain margin of this Bode plot and allow k to change such that the closed loop poles will lie on the imaginary axis. So first, let's get our gain crossover frequency. That is the place where the magnitude plot crosses 0 dB. Well, it doesn't, or at least not in the Bode plot that is shown here. Now, this only goes to 0.1 radians per second, but you can imagine extending this out to 0.01 radians per second and so on. And if you look at the slope of this line and extend it out, you can see that it probably crosses the 0 dB line at just a little bit uh, below 0.1 radians per second, maybe right about here. So there's our gain crossover frequency. If we extend that line down, and then imagine extending this out, since this is flat and appears to be staying flat for low frequencies, we can get our phase margin as the amount above negative 180 at that gain crossover frequency, and that's going to be 90 degrees. So our phase margin is equal to 90 degrees. It's beautiful. That means that the closed loop system is stable for k equals 1. Now let's get their gain margin. So here's our phase crossover frequency, the place where the phase plot crosses negative 180. And we'll extend that up to where it crosses the magnitude plot. And now we look at this distance, and we can see that the gain margin is about 30 dB. It's below the 0 dB line, so it's positive. Now, what we're going to do is, is imagine k increasing. And if I increase k, it's going to shift this plot up. So here I've increased k just a little bit. And all I'm doing is just tracing that plot. Oops, I dipped down a bit there. I just trace that plot shifted up just a wee bit. Well, now our gain margin just decreased to about, well, roughly 20 dB. It's about 20 dB below the 0 dB line. So by increasing k, I've reduced the gain margin. And I can keep doing that until this magnitude plot just kisses the 0 dB line. Now, of course, I don't really need to re-sketch it every time. All I have to know is this distance. That's how much I would have to shift the magnitude plot up before the gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency actually become equal. And that's the point where the closed loop poles will lie on the imaginary axis. 
So what it tells me is that I can increase k to 30 dB. Now, of course, this is in decibels. I should convert this into an actual uh, k value, which would be k equals 10, 30 over 20. And that would be it. So 10 to the 3 halves. Now here's another example, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So first, I get my gain crossover frequency, and it's roughly there. Extend that line down. All right, so my omega GC is about 10 radians per second. Extend that down, and I can see that my phase margin is negative. So my phase margin is roughly negative 30 degrees. What that tells me is that the closed loop system will be unstable for k equal 1. Now let's get the gain margin. The phase crossover frequency is right about there. So let's see, omega PC is about 6 radians per second. Now if I draw that line up, we'll just find that same point on the magnitude plot. Right about there, I can see that my gain margin is about negative 10 dB. So what that tells me is that the closed loop system is unstable for k equals 1. And if I decrease the magnitude plot by 10 dB, then my gain crossover and phase crossover frequency will be equal, and I'll have closed loop poles on the imaginary axis. If I were to decrease the magnitude plot even more, then my closed loop poles would move into the left half plane and the system would be stable. So let's see k equal negative 10 dB is really k equals 10 to the negative 10 over 20, or about 0.32. So if I set k, the, the loop gain, to 0.32, I'll have that transition of instability and stability. If I go down farther, it will be stable. Now here's one more example and we're done. Same kind of thing. If I go over here, I find my gain crossover frequency right about 1 radian per second. And if I jump down here, I can see that I have some rather poor looking phase margin. My phase margin is, let's see, negative 45 or maybe negative 70 degrees. That's not so good. Now, if we look at the phase crossover frequency, I have one here, but I have another one there. That's completely fine. This means that there are two places where I can have transitions of instability or poles on the imaginary axis. Another way to view this now, you've been looking at this for a bit, is that this little bubble right here is actually a very intriguing spot. That's the place where I can make the system go stable by shifting the magnitude plot up and down. So if I were to shift the magnitude plot such that its gain crossover frequency is anywhere between these two frequencies, then the closed loop system will be stable. Now what that means is I would have to either shift it that amount or that amount. So if I look at these two gains, this is about 40 dB, and this is about about, oh, just a little bit over 60. I'll call it 70 dB. So what this is telling us is that I can increase k to 40 dB, which is k equal 100, and the system will be stable. And I can keep increasing it all the way up to 70 dB. So that would be k equal 10, 70 over 20, and the system will still be closed loop stable. But if I go over that amount, then the system is unstable. So to summarize, I introduced what a Bode plot is and what it looks like, and then how to analyze it, and especially how to pick off the gain margin and phase margin, and how to analyze stability by imagining that gain plot moving up and down and seeing how the phase margin changes and how that affects stability. So in subsequent videos, we'll see how to sketch Bode plots, how to make them using MATLAB, and how to do design using Bode plots. Again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.